Okay, in today's video, I'm going to show you a circuit that I put together, which I will be using for some exterior lighting. The circuit that you're looking at right here is designed that when it gets dark enough outside and you can adjust the triggering with the potentiometer right here, you do not have to use a phototransistor. You can use an LDR, a light dependent resistor as well. In a minute, I'll go over the circuit and show you everything how it's laid out. Once this circuit is triggered by dark, what will happen? The relay will turn on for a set duration. Now in this case, I have it set roughly for between four and six hours. So if I want to connect this to some exterior lights, I may want them to go on automatically when it gets dark, but I don't want them running all night long wasting electricity. So that's why this circuit is so useful. After the circuit turns on, the relay will remain on powering whichever circuit you want to power for the duration which is set by the resistor and capacitor value on pin 6 and 7 of the 555 timer. It's a one-shot configuration for the timer. So once it triggers, the circuit will remain on, the relay will remain closed, the contacts, for the full duration. Once the duration has passed, the load will be disconnected from the mains power and then the circuit will remain off for the rest of the night. The sun will come up in the morning and shine on the phototransistor. The lights will never come on. And what that's basically doing is resetting the circuit when the sun comes up. It's like pressing a reset button on the 555 timer. When the sun rises, the circuit remains off, resetting the circuit. And the next time the sun goes down, the circuit will trigger again. And when it triggers, the lights will remain on for the duration that you set. Now I'm going to post a link in the video description area that will take you to a calculator for figuring out how long of a delay you are going to get using a particular resistor and capacitor. The circuit is not susceptible to false triggering. I made a little modification to the schematic that I found online, which I will show you in a minute. Now as long as a bright light is not shined on the LDR or the phototransistor after the circuit is triggered, it will remain off the whole night. A little bit of lightning will not bother it. If you go to position the circuit, make sure you face the LDR or the phototransistor down towards the ground or off to the side. Whatever you do, don't face it in the direction where headlights from a car would be coming into a driveway shining onto the phototransistor because there is not a delay built into the circuit to allow for light shining on there. If a headlight shines directly into this, it will reset the circuit. So you don't want to have that pointing where bright light is. If you have a thunderstorm or some flashing, that's not going to affect it. Some lighting outside the front of your house, that won't affect it. But a bright light will definitely reset the circuit. So make sure you set it up properly. The relay that I chose has a coil resistance of around 600 ohms. Make sure you look for one that has between 600 and 1,000 ohms. The circuit will draw less current. Also look at the relay contacts. In my case, I used a relay that has 5 amp contacts, so I can use roughly 600 watts of lighting. The circuit was originally designed to be used between 4.5 and, and, say, 15 volts and I wasn't going to use it for that so what I did is I incorporated a transformerless power supply which I designed specifically for the circuit. Now the transformerless power supply circuit is as follows right here using 120 volts you have your line there's your neutral. 200 milliamp fuse have to have that for safety. After the fuse the current will flow through a 1 microfarad minimum 250 volt capacitor Ideally, for safety, you should use a Type X, but if you do not have one, you could use a poly capacitor. They'll work fine also. In parallel with the capacitor is a 470K ohm resistor. The only purpose of this 470K resistor is to bleed off any charge on this capacitor in the event the circuit is removed from power. After the capacitor, it flows into the bridge rectifier. Now, in my case, I used a bridge rectifier as you can see right here. I got this out of some scrap electronics. I think it's rated around one amp. I will be using nowhere near that much current. 
the circuit only draws around 32 milliamps at 12 volts and that's with the relay contacts closing and 19 milliamps on standby. You can make the bridge rectifier out of 1N407s. You definitely want to use a bridge for the full wave rectification. If you don't and you only use one diode, you're only going to have a half wave rectifier and then the circuit will not be efficient. You'll have to make this value much higher on this capacitor to compensate for only using half the waveform. So definitely use the full wave bridge like you see here. The negative then goes to an electrolytic capacitor. I have a 220 microfarad, 35 volt across the rails. There's the positive and the negative. After the capacitor, which is used for smoothing out any ripples, you will flow through a half watt 56 ohm resistor. After that, you are going to go into a 12 volt Zener diode. This is a Zener regulator circuit. After it leaves here, the power supply will then supply the circuit. Now the relay that I used here, as I said earlier, is a 12 volt relay. It has a coil resistance of around 600 or 700 ohms. And I also have a back EMF diode, which is a 4007. Ideally, you could use a 1N4003 up to a 4007. I tend not to like to use the 4001s and 2s because I have had transistors and integrated circuits get destroyed from the back EMF. So try and keep it at 4003 to 4007. And that's in reverse bias across the coil. The NE555 is a 555 timer. Pin 5 goes to a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. There was in this location between pin 5 and the positive rail, there was a 4148 or a 914 diode and it was causing a lot of problems with the circuit and I ended up removing that from the circuit. So disregard that diode if you see that in another schematic. The whole 555 circuit is set up in a one-shot configuration. Pins 4 and pin 8 tied together. Pin 6 and 7 is tied together. Pin 1 to ground. Pin 6 and 7 ties into the junction of a 2 mega ohm potentiometer and a capacitor. These two components right here are extremely critical. These are what set the time delay at which your circuit will deactivate and turn your lights off. So I'm going to put the link in the video description area that will allow you to easily calculate this by inputting the different values for the resistor and capacitor. Now what I did in my setup, because I don't have a 2 meg potentiometer at hand, I only have much higher ones and a 1 meg, I took a 1 meg pot and I put it in series with a 4.7 meg ohm fixed resistor in series with a 3300 microfarad capacitor. And by doing so, I can adjust the potentiometer. It'll give me a runtime between 4 hours and 45 minutes and 5 hours and 45 minutes. This is the trigger pin for the circuit, pin 2. If you touch that to ground, what would happen that would turn the circuit on, off, on, off, on, off. So the triggering is done from pin 2. There's a 220K before the 0.01 microfarad capacitor. This was a 104 cap at 0.1 microfarad. I replaced it for better performance. You have a 220K before that and after it you have a 270K heading up towards the positive rail. After that point right here from the 270K and the 0.01 microfarad or the 103 heads into a NPN transistor. You could use a lot of different types. I think I use a KSP2222A. You could use a 2N3904, 2N4401. There's a lot that you can use. BC547 as well. That goes into this transistor and you have the base going into the collector of this one. From that point here where the collector is, is a 1K to the top rail. Both emitters down to the negative rail. Over here is the triggering portion with your LDR or your phototransistor. This shows a 50K. You might want to try 100K in this position, depending on how sensitive your LDR is. I chose to use a 470 ohm in series with the 
phototransistor instead of the 1K. So you may have to play around with the values here to get the circuit to trigger just right. Now I did have a problem with false triggering and I eliminated that problem. I did a lot of tests and I did verify the problem was gone by placing a 0 .001 or a 102 capacitor from pin 2 to ground. What it does, it desensitizes slightly any little pulses going into pin 2 and that made a big difference by putting that. What I'm going to do now is give you a little demonstration showing how this works. Alright, the circuit is connected up to a 120 volt power supply. We will be using a small 7 watt night light bulb to show when the circuit triggers. Because I'm using the phototransistor, the circuit is having a hard time detecting the artificial light which is on in the room right now. So this circuit is actually active. I allowed it to cycle once. It's only set to run about a minute. I swapped out my capacitor with a 10 microfarad for this demonstration. So right now the circuit is active. It's basically the circuit came on once already thinking it's dark and now it's going to remain off the whole night until the sun rises again and everything is reset for the following night. I'm going to take this ultra bright LED right here and I'm going to shine it directly into the phototransistor to simulate that the sun is rising. And I'm going to hold it there and slowly pull it away. As I pull it away it's going to think it's getting dark again and then you will see the night light come on. Let me demonstrate that sun is coming in and I'm going to slowly move it away and you can see it clicked on. Now if you had this set for three or four hours this would not turn off until three or four hours from now. Now the other really good thing about this circuit once the circuit activates after it gets dark it doesn't matter if a car headlight or anything shines on the phototransistor or the LDR. It will have no effect on the duration. It will still run the same time you set it. The only time the lighting could become a problem after the circuit turns off four hours later or five hours later whatever you set it for if a car headlight shines directly into it that may fool the circuit into thinking it's been reset. So that's why you should ideally place the phototransistor or the LDR facing down towards the ground or off towards the side away from any car headlights. Now if the transformerless power supply is made exactly like I told you to make it, the only thing that you should experience is maybe warm to very warm resistors. That's about it. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.